Let's talk about the tools that we use. One that you'll find everywhere here are USB sticks, right? Right. They're everywhere, even at the conference. Well, even so, yeah, everyone's heard of Stuxnet, right? right. So, um, so what should you know? What should the audience know about USB? I'd be still careful of USB sticks because even though the security industry and Microsoft, for example, has uh, you know has advised people, you know, if you turn, you know, they they turn off what they call auto run, so co code doesn't automatically run. They they make it in the default configuration where if you plug in a USB stick, it's not gonna work. But of course, as the industry figures out how to mitigate risk, yeah. there's always new and clever people that have figure out new ways to compromise. In fact, I'll show a quick demo with the USB. Do it. Let's okay, do it. great. So, some of you may have heard this. This is actually, this attack was actually discussed at Black Hat in Las Vegas. And this attack was actually developed by a guy named Karsten Knoll. He actually lives in Berlin, I believe. He's a brilliant researcher. And this is called the bad USB attack. And what this does is it exploits the flaw in the controller, in the controller firmware on the, on the USB. And I'm able to change this USB into an HID device to act as a keyboard to inject keystrokes to actually drop a malware payload. So I'm going to show you how this works. It's really easy. So, First of all, let me go over to the Mac here. Password's Kevin123, in case anybody was curious. <laughs> <laughs> and people always ask me for my password. And then I'll change it to 1234 next month. OK, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring up, let me make this larger. What you're looking at here is just what we call a Trojan listener. And basically, it's going to look for connections from compromised machines. It's a, it's a modified version of a tool called Dark Comment. And what it does is once a computer is infected, we're going to see it pop up here. And then we're going to see what control we have. And over here, we have a Windows 7 system. I just patched it last night. Updated, um, uh, one, one second, updated um, McAfee antivirus. So it's the latest version of McAfee with the latest updates. And one second. So this is the typical system some target's going to have in their home environment. So if we could bring, um, comp uh, we could, I could, uh, yeah, that's a good one. So what we have here is the patch system. We have McAfee running down here. You see, uh, you'll see the little icon for McAfee. Fully patched Windows 7. So we're going to stick in the USB. And what I want you to do is pay attention to up here on the attacker machine. This attacker machine is actually in London. It's not here. I'm uh, connected to it. And this machine is actually physically here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know, plug in the USB stick. It's going to pop up. And, and how do you get people to plug in a USB stick? Here, I'm going to format it, by the way, make sure it's clean. And I'll, then we'll discuss how to get people to pl plug these things in. So we're going to format it. You found the stick, you know, you want to format it, it's clean. And then I want you to pay attention and watch, watch the Windows machine because I have it timed. Usually you time it when there's idle time, when nobody's around, when somebody goes to lunch, they leave their office, and it will inject the keystrokes to drop a payload from the internet. So just keep watching this. It should be about 15 seconds. I said for 15 to 20 seconds, and it should pop up any second. There it goes. That's it. But that would happen, not immediately. Of course, when I'm doing this demo, I do it right here in front of you. And in a second, we should see the Trojan pop up here. Give it a second. Take, sometimes it takes 20 seconds. And it's a root-kitted Trojan. There it is. Right? So this machine isn't even in our building. This is in London. And this is, a, this is a piece of malware you don't want on your system. Basically, if we look at the functionality of this, it's nothing special. You could upload and download files. You could, example, you could look at stored passwords. Let me show you that really quick. You could modify the registry. You could, um, you could turn somebody's laptop into a room bug. So if they're using a laptop, you can enable the microphone, capture the audio files, and then transfer those audio files at any time. So essentially it becomes a room bug. Now there's a, a 
password there to VPN, Cbit Rocks. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of small. Okay. And uh, the coolest one that I like, one of my favorites, uh, second, is the spy functions again, where you, this is webcam, so you can turn on somebody's webcam. In fact, one of the CBIT employees back there, there's only one guy that has tape over his webcam, so I had a laugh, right? He's probably thinking of me. Right? So I turn on the webcam, and again, this is, you know, in London, so there's uh, probably gonna be some latency here. And over here, this light pops up, and here I am, hi. And you could basically use this malware essentially to do anything. <laughs> Physically watch the person, wiretap audio, upload and download other files, which could be other types of malware. You basically have full system control of the machine. You can basically upload a tool like Windows Credential Editor and get the person's passwords. It doesn't matter. But, but Kevin, isn't yes. this proof though that when you are camming for anything, even when you're doing FaceTime, you, someone, can, someone can be capturing that and you have no idea, right? Someone can be recording. But you, exactly. Yeah. And they could be watching it in real time. So basically, this is something you don't want on your machine. And when we do a couple more demos today, we're going to install the same malware. I won't have to go through the functionality. But how do you get a target to plug in a USB stick? Do you leave it in the parking lot? Do you mail it in the post with some marketing material? No. You go to the company's Facebook account or, or, or wherever their, their website, you download their logo, and you put in red, uh, in red their company logo, extremely proprietary and confidential payroll salary history, second quarter 2015. <laughs> I promise you somebody will open it. But I got to tell you, Germany, you guys are different. I was staying at the Marriott in Munich to speak at a different uh, conference, and I do this all the time. I'll go to the receptionist or the concierge, and I'll give them a USB stick, and I'll need them to print out my itinerary. So I hand it to the lady at the Marriott in, in Munich, and I say, can you print off something on here? And she goes, I'm sorry, sir. We're not going to plug your USB drive into our computer. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that. <laughs> so the only time I was ever turned down was in Germany. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so this exploits a bug in the, in the firmware, which you cannot, there's no mitigation. 